There's a saying in boxing, as go the heavyweights, so goes the rest of boxing. Typically meaning that as long as the heavyweight division is thriving, the rest of boxing is going to be okay because it's the big guys that always manage to put on the show for the people. And the people are always intrigued by the big guys because when they enter the ring, one punch can get the job done. Therefore, they provide excitement. And this Saturday, on the undercard of Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder 3, there are two exciting young heavyweights in their primes and they will square off. It will be exciting and we look forward to it. What will be in the heavyweight division can be defined by this fight as these young prospects come forward. On Saturday, October 9th, live on ESPN Plus and Fox Sports pay-per-view, two young undefeated heavyweights collide in their primes. Frank Sanchez will be taking on F.A. Ajagba for the WBC Continental America's heavyweight title and the WBO NABO heavyweight title. These two men are definitely ones to watch in the sport because they bring youth, punching power, and excitement to a division that's already hot. Sanchez will be entering the ring with a record of 18 and 0 with 13 KOs. The man across from him, Efe Ajagba, is 15 and 0 with 12 KOs. Someone may be going down, but what we do know is going down is a tremendous fight against two young men. They're no longer prospects they are at the contender stage. And again, people, this is the future. This is what you want to see when you are watching heavyweight boxing. It couldn't come soon enough because as the old guard is about to finish up their business, we need to see what the future holds. And it is exciting. Let's consider Sanchez, the Cuban Flash. He enters this contest six foot four with a 78 inch reach. Sanchez is a boxer, puncher. Sometimes he'll fight off the back foot. Sometimes he'll move around a little bit. Other times, He'll go right at his opponent and stand on the inside to get in that work. But the thing about Sanchez is his style is still crowd pleasing because he puts himself in a position to be aggressive. Aggression in the heavyweight division is always welcoming. And his opponent, Effie Ajagba, is also 
of the similar ilk. He brings the same and aggressive nature. He comes in looking to punish his opponents with an improbable 85 inch reach Ajagba can stand away from his opponents and nail them a shot without ever getting close enough to be hit in counter. But is he well versed in that area? Well, he was on his way, but he decided to break camp with his trainer, Ronnie Shields. Ajagba has been in there with some mediocre talent even one contest where he had a gentleman leave the ring as soon as the first bell rang to begin their fight. What an embarrassment. And it was only because F.A. had been the picture of knockouts, similar to Deontay Wilder by being such a tall and rangy fighter with a big right hand, a devastating right hand, I might add. And so his opponent decided to not go ahead with that opportunity. And it's okay, because just as we saw that take place, Frank Sanchez was putting in his work against similar opposition, but in a more exciting manner. This fighter, is definitely one to watch out for people. If he gets the opportunity, he can upset some guys who are currently in the upper echelon of the division right now. Being 29 years old, he's right at the prime years in time. And there are fighters out there that he would make great matchups with. Being a boxer puncher and a strong fisted fighter, it helps that he has that Cuban background, being able to be diversified. But will that also be his Achilles? Because we have seen the Cuban fighters get frozen out of their opportunities, especially when they are good. That's the thing about the heavyweight division. We've seen already Luis King Kong Ortiz not get opportunities because he's simply too good. Some guys like to say it's his age, but it has absolutely nothing to do with his age. It has everything to do with the fact that King Kong is a towering menace in the ring and can knock out an opponent, being a southpaw at that and exceptional boxing skills. Will Frank Sanchez be the air replacement for Luis King Kong Ortiz? This fight might give us an answer, but I'm telling you, there is a fighter who will have something to say about that and that fighter is F.A. Ajagba. It was reported he was one of the fight fighters who was a sparring partner for Tyson Fury, preparing for his third match with Deontay Wilder. And word has it that Ajagba was more than handling Fury and had Fury, if not busted up, possibly on the canvas. That's something coming from a guy who had not even fought anyone on Fury's level yet. But it just speaks volumes about the talent, range, and power that this man has. And they list his age as 27. If that be correct, he is entering his prime. And that means a lot for the heavyweight division because there are more than enough exciting fights on the horizon. And a fighter like F.A. Ajaba would definitely bring something to the ring for the fans to enjoy. 
Now, between the two of them, how do they mesh? What do you think, Stormy, that these two men can do against one another? Glad you asked. Personally, I think Sanchez is the better fighter between the two. But Ajagba has that vaunted equalizer, which is the big right hand. Will he be able to land that shot and get Sanchez in trouble or make Sanchez respect him enough that Sanchez may not want to engage? That remains to be seen. When he was under the tutelage of Ronnie Shields, Ajagba was showing steady progress, but he's been a little inactive since leaving Ronnie. Understandably so, Ronnie was securing him fights that was helping the developmental process. Sanchez has to fight certain opposition because He's good enough that he can actually beat top fighters, but they're moving him in a manner where he can gain that experience as a pro and they're welcoming being patient because they know that the top of the division has to be sorted out. He has power in both hands. He's usually always well conditioned and I'm telling you, his versatility makes the difference between the two. It had been argued that Ajagba might be a little stiff in his approach, a little more robotic. And they're probably correct when they say that about him. But the thing about it is the man is still exciting to watch in the ring. And when he lands his right hand, just like Deontay Wilder, people do some kind of silly dance or something, if not just go completely out. But he lacks head movement. He's not very agile and mobile on his feet. That's where certain fighters with particular boxing styles could take advantage of him. But with that 85 inch reach, that makes it quite difficult. We have yet to see if someone can get on the inside and see what he has to offer being an inside fighter. My guess would be with such a long reach, they haven't opted to teach him how to fight on the inside as much. And that might be where Sanchez, if he's able to work his way in, can have some advantages himself. To get on the inside, where the long reach would be a disadvantage for a Jabba. And then he can start doing some other things to make a Jabba uncomfortable. A lot of times when you get close to the big guys, they just like to tie you up and hold. And that may be very well what a Jabba tries to do. So Sanchez on the inside would have his advantages. What is not known also is the chin of these fighters. Though Ajagba was down once in his career, he came back, took care of business, and seemed to shake it off. And that wasn't it against a high quality opposition. So what will happen if Sanchez is able to tag him? Very interesting proposition right there. Now, they both have a fighter on their record that they both took on, Brian Howard. Brian Howard suffered a third round KO to Ajagba and a fourth round KO to Sanchez. So they both made pretty much quick and easy work of Howard, but what will they do with one another? that remains to be seen. I would like to try and give Ajagba more credit to see what he can do as a fighter that is just on the cusp of being a contender. 
His one drawback, again, I can't state it enough. The loss of Ronnie Shields in his corner, that does make a difference, people. Shields has been there through the early 90s when you had champions like Evander Holyfield and David Tua out of their stable. He knows quality fighters. He knows how to position fighters for those title shots and not just have a title shot, but be in a position to win a title, defend a title, and reign as a champion after obtaining a title. I am not so certain about Ajabba's disciplines. Is he dedicated? We'll find out. This fight will reveal a lot about both gentlemen. And I'll tell you, that to me is his one draw drawback. Now, I'll say this. On the other hand, for Sanchez, he has R Reynoso in his corner who has the likes of Canelo Alvarez in his stable, as well as Oscar Valdez and a few other noted names that he's had over the past few years. So, will Reynoso be able to take Frank Sanchez to the top? We will find out this Saturday night. What do you guys think about this? An intriguing heavyweight matchup. I think it's one of the good fights on the card and has the potential to be fight of the night, even over the main event. It depends on the approach of the two fighters. This is Stormy B-Man. First of all, let me say shout out to the LDBC, the Lions Den Boxing Community, and Liberated Perspective, the third eye view of the world. For more content such as this, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Leave comments. Let me know what you think about these two big men and what they have to offer and will they be successful against the other? Which would be successful against the other? That's all I have for you at this time. This is fight week. It's an exciting week. We've got heavyweights and I am looking forward to it. Until the next time we speak, peace to everyone out there. Remain safe. Enjoy the fights.